بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم دس از آنا گول فرام دا ڈپارٹمنٹ آف جرنلزم اینڈ میس کمیونیکیشن ور بیک ود دا کورس کمیونیکیشن تھیوریز ٹو ویئرنگ دا کورس جی ایم سی تھری ون ٹو اٹس آر نائنتھ نائنتھ لیکچر اینڈ دا ٹاپک ٹوڈے از تھریٹیکل پیراڈیمس ویل بی ڈسکسنگ فرسٹ واٹ اے پیراڈیم ایز اینڈ دین ویل موو ٹوڈس دا پیراڈیمس آف کمیونیکیشن تھیوری One way to simplify the understanding of complex theories is to categorize multiple theories into broader categories or paradigms. A, pa- it's called, a paradigm is a collection of concepts, values, assumptions and practices that constitute a way of viewing reality for a community that shares them. especially an intellectual community. According to Kuhn, intellectual revolutions occur when people abandon previously held paradigms for new ones. For example, when Pythagoras in the 6th, 6th century BC argued the earth was a sphere rather than flat, he presented a paradigm shift. Now, what is a paradigm? Paradigm is just a way to categorize multiple theories into broader categories, a broad way of uh, viewing reality. So, it's an excellent example that previously it was thought that Earth was flat. And then it was, obviously it was way too ba- uh, way back. And it was equally... Uh, pro- uh, nobody had any objections with that because obviously the earth seems to be flat and nobody had gone uh, into the space to look at it. Then it was in the 6th century BC that Pythagoras argued that the earth was a sphere. So now that is an example of a paradigm shift that one paradigm viewed earth as a flat place, the other viewed it as a sphere. So it's just two different perspectives, two different ways of viewing reality. Both were ways of re- viewing reality. Nothing was known for sure, for dead sure. Okay. So let's discuss another example so you get to know it. Not long ago, those concerned about um, environmental issues were were considered minority or fringe groups and as a result many of their concerns were dismissed yet today environmental concerns have so infiltrated the mainstream that it is now trendy to be an environmentalist like people take it as a, a style thing to say i'm an environmentalist it's in trend Thanks to scientists asking div- difficult, theoretical and practical questions about consumption of scarce resources, um, awareness about air and water quality, um, food safety and global warming, these things have become part of global public discourse and environmentalism has caught on everywhere. According to Jackson, there's been a paradigm shift in society away from thinking of the earth as an unending source of resources to instead looking at it as a wider living ecosystem that we are slowly killing. Now the concept, there was once this uh, view of... Um, towards the reality that the earth had an unending source of resources. And with the passage of time, there has been a shift that actually uh, there is a wider living ecosystem that we humans are slowly killing it. So the shift is evident in everything from um, popular movies to eco-friendly products. Like it's a bigger thing and a smaller level everywhere the shift is quite evident. Uh, from international political treaties regarding environmental policies to waste management strategies within small communities. So it has come a very evident shift everywhere. In fact, 
evidence has contributed so significantly to three theories about global warming that NASA now reports that 97% of climate scientists believe that climate warming trends over the past century are very likely due to human activities. So this is now a clear evidence of paradigm shift. In the field of communication, there are numerous ways to categorize and understand theoretical paradigms. No single way is more valuable than another, nor is any paradigm complete or better in its coverage of communication. Instead, paradigms are a way for us to organize a great number of ideas into categories. For our purposes, uh, communication scientists, we have uh, divided communication theories into five paradigms that we call the empirical laws, human rules, rhetorical, systems, and critical paradigms. We'll be discussing each one of these in detail throughout this course in the upcoming lectures. I'll start with the first one today, which is empirical laws paradigm. Theories in the empirical laws paradigm approach communication from the perspective that there are universal laws that govern how we communicate. Okay, I'll say it again. Uh, Theories in this paradigm, they approach communication from the perspective that there are universal raw laws that govern how we communicate. So, this paradigm views reality as the communication of everybody's communication in this world is governed by certain universal laws. Other names for the empirical laws include, the same paradigm is known by other names as well, which is, uh, one is um, hard science, um, the positivist approach, the covering laws approach, and the classical approach. Since uh, these are many names for the same thing. Natural scientists look for universal laws to understand and explain our world. Now, remember in our last lecture, we discussed gravity. So I'll continue with that example. Using our example of gravity, we know that objects fall to the earth 100% of the time when we drop them, whichever, we use the example of pen, but whichever object it is. This is a universal law. In the late 1950s, scholars began studying human communication using approaches developed in the natural sciences which is also known as the scientific method. Thus, early proponents of empirical laws theories studied communication to see if there were universal communication laws similar to do those in the natural world. See, uh, we discussed it last uh, in our last lecture as well, that for example, if uh, you drop a pen or a desk, so it's gonna hit the desk no matter how many times you drop it. Uh, say, or, for example, you use, you're holding it above the floor, so it's going to hit the floor no matter how many times you drop it. So that is a universal law. It has to go down. In communication, when, this, uh, when the early researches in communication began, scholars had a similar view about communication as well. They were of the view that there were universal communication laws very similar to those in the natural world, the ones that are uh, discovered by natural scientists. Now, natural laws at work in our world influence every moment of our lives. Every time you fly in an airplane or cross a bridge, you trust that the people who designed and built the plane or the bridge followed the physical laws that allow a plane to fly and a bridge to span a distance without collapsing. Like we all trust them. Do we ever stand, for example, when we have to cross a bridge, uh, especially when, when we are in a vehicle, do we s step back, stop for a while and consider, can we cross this bridge or not? 
like we trust them that the, those who were responsible for the construction they must have followed the physical laws the laws that allow a bridge to span a distance without collapsing or for example um or every time when you press the brakes on a car you trust them to slow down slow you down based on the laws explaining how long mass traveling at a certain speed takes to stop even if you do not understand all of these laws you live by them and believe the laws themselves hold true 100% of the time for example you never think about applying brakes but obviously you trust it you never think about the laws uh, most of us we never think about the laws for example that govern the building of bridges but we just trust it are there laws you follow about communication with this kind of regularity are they applicable 100% of the time in all situations and with all people what happens if someone breaks one of these laws are the consequences similar to when you break physical laws um for example uh, is the consequence for calling someone by the wrong name like that is a communication issue uh, comparable to that of uh, hitting your brakes and the brakes not working is there a comparison those who pro- approach communication from an empirical laws perspective believe there are laws that govern human communication the premise of this approach can be stated as a simple equation of causation if x then y for example if i greet a person with hi how are you then i anticipate a response fine how are you it's likely that you can you conduct much of your communication using this equation however does that mean that it works all of the time so it's kind of technical uh the f- laws of a natural science those are different and laws in communication those are different things and we all know it but we've never studied these things we've never pondered over these things otherwise we know so many of these things but we generally know through experience okay there are three characteristics that help us understand empirical laws theories causation prediction and generalization causation states that there is a cause and effect relationship for all actions in the physical world if someone drops a pen will fall in human communication if someone says hello to someone that person responds so the cause and effect relationship for all actions prediction suggests that once someone determines a particular law is at work they will use it to predict outcomes of communication situations um <laughs> have you ever rehearsed how you will ask someone to help you cheat an exam and have you ever tried to predict the outcome so uh what evidence did you use to make the prediction in this example uh you're using if x then y equation to predict the outcome of the interaction generalization generalization suggests that if a prediction shows that a behavior produces a certain outcome we can generalize our predictions to include a wide variety of uh, people situations and contexts uh we make generalizations such as uh if i'm friendly to others they'll be friendly to me it's based on our past experiences with this type of behavior however 
does, this does not account for scenarios in which the person might not hear you or that person might be having a bad day and does not wish to respond or the person might assume you are talking to another person so they choose not to acknowledge you so it doesn't include these things in the physical sciences laws are absolute this is comforting because it allows us to make informed decisions based on what we know about the laws that go in the world around us in in our example of gravity we know that dropping an object will produce the same result every time we could spend the rest of our lives testing this theory but we don't have to we know what the result will be without having to continuously drop an object now imagine what it would be like to always know what the outcome would be of every communication situation would that be comforting to you or would that make your life boring uh i'll leave the slide for a while so that you can note down the uh, details of causation prediction and generalization mm, causation as i said earlier is uh, the about the cause and uh, effect relationship for all actions uh prediction is that once someone determines mm, a particular law is at work they'll use that prediction uh that to predict outcomes of the communication situations generalization if a prediction shows that a behavior produces a certain outcome we can generalize our prediction to include a wide variety of people situations and context now as i just said earlier would that be a uh, comforting for you to know what would be the um, outcome of every communication situation or would that make your life boring unlike the physical world laws that govern human communication are not absolute and are most often bound by culture and context empirical laws theories are generally approached from the perspective of probability rather than absoluteness probability states that under certain conditions it is highly likely that we can predict communication outcomes so there are certain conditions in those certain conditions then it is high, highly likely or it is probable that we can predict the outcomes of a communication for example um, when you greet someone with a hello it is probable but not absolute that they will respond back with a greeting of their own uh if they do not you might run through a variety of reasons why the other person did not respond in accordance with the laws that govern greetings in our culture even though empirical laws theories do not produce absolutes about uh, communication we still use them in our everyday interactions with one another uh businesses advertisers schools and other organizations use this approach to predict consumer um, educational and behavioral habits of particular demographic groups while their approaches never produce a 100% cause effect relationship the information that they gather helps them determine what actions to take to be successful in their communicative behaviors so uh there are obviously in communication research uh, even though if we are using the uh, paradigm of empirical laws there are no absolute results there are no absolute 100 percents but there is a probability and we uh for, with that probability we can predict the outcomes of certain communication behaviors 
empirical loss theories um, are relatively new approach for understanding communication uh by relatively new i mean uh, i'll explain we have only been developing empirical loss theories for communication for the past 100 years or so so actually that is kind of relatively new because uh, there's a lot of research is needed to date none of this research has come to the conclusion that given a certain circumstance a particular communicative behavior will always produce a particular outcome however working under an empirical loss approach that accepts probability we have many research examples that demonstrate probable loss that govern human communication for example if you are uh, dealing with um uh, for example you are dealing with someone who is very angry so there are laws how to deal with them but for example if you uh, get angry if someone is angry at you for example someone is yelling at you and you yell back so it's not 100% sure it would uh, yield the same result uh in certain cases the other um, one might get more uh, um, angry or uh infuriated and in certain cases the other person might get uh timid and he might get frightened so uh these are no there are no 100 persons however uh in case of empirical loss approach uh that accepts probability so we do have a lot of uh, research examples that demonstrate that probable loss uh go on human communication uh it was back in 1953 hofland janes and kelly they were the first to use empirical loss theories to explain communication their interest in mass communication and propaganda during world war 2 led them to study effective persuasion in mass communication and propaganda campaigns now that was a very different time and uh, uh since that was a very different time and in that cases propaganda had worked very well during world war 2 they theorized that the more attractive a communicator along with other traits the more likely people would be persuaded so when they were doing their research using empirical loss theories to explain communication and they were working in the backdrop of propaganda and world war 2 so they came up with this theory that the more attractive communicator along with other traits the more likely people would be persuaded their empirical loss theories still influence how a great deal of mass media is produced today uh think about movies or uh, television shows and advertisements you see are most of the people you watch in these mediums considered attractive and intelligent if you for example if you want to uh, influence someone if you want to persuade an audience so the person you are using as the communicator that person has to have an impressive appeal to that uh, to himself for example that um, people should or the audience should consider that person to be attractive to be intelligent in order for them to be persuaded by the message whichever message this person is communicating so those who produce mass media use tremendous resources to research probabilistic probabilistic empirical laws of human behavior before making decisions about what and who to include in their messages mm, on a smaller scale we all use probabilistic empirical laws to govern predict and control our communication with others back to our level for example if you are your siblings uh you usually have an idea that 
who is the most uh, persuasive person when uh, when there is something that needs to be demanded from your parents or mm, you need a, a permission for example for a party or for a trip or anything so you also actually predict uh how if i ask for the permission how things would happen and if for example my sibling goes and asks for the permission for the same thing how things would work and based on your predictions actually you control your communication with your uh, family or whoever it is so once again it draw uh, trickles down to your level as well mm then let's move to certain examples from the present this was an example from the past now coming to the present uh the idea of leadership in group and organizational communication has a body of well established empirical laws theories called the trait approaches these theories suggest that there are certain physical personality and communicative characteristics that make one person more likely to be a leader over another i'll uh, repeat that there are certain physical personality and communicative characteristics that make one person more likely to be a leader over another as i said earlier this was about group and organizational communication so in terms of groups and organizations obviously someone turns out to be a leader especially in group communication a leader a leadership is something very important same is the case in organizational communication leadership is something very important so for that um, there are empirical loss theories these are called trait approaches trait theories propose that people for example in western since this uh, research was in western societies so it's about uh, western societies the the theories propose that people in western societies who are physically tall uh, charismatic intelligent white and male yes are more likely be, to be leaders i'm talking about west i'm not talking about uh, pakistan okay so imagine these the theories propose this thing about the west that people in western societies who are number 1 physically tall number 2 charismatic number 3 intelligent number 4 white because they like color and white they differentiate and number 5 male they are more likely to be leaders or be perceived as leaders or placed in more leadership positions and they make better leaders than those who don't exhibit these characteristics now you may be thinking what about people like mother teresa or martin luther king junior or the most recent barack obama well this question brings up two important points first it shows that communication theories are not absolute as we said earlier second it shows that some theoretical viewpoints may work to promote a certain world view of those in positions of power an idea we'll mo- explore more thoroughly uh, in the upcoming lectures when we discuss critical theories paradigm despite feeling uncomfortable with some of the assumptions of trait theories if you look at those in the highest levels of leadership for example in the us the vast majority have characteristics described in trait theories so even though you find it like uncomfortable we all get uncomfortable with such kind of things but it is true it has been proven now the strengths uh, a particular strength of empirical laws theories is that they help us determine cause and effect relationships in our communication with others understanding communication using these theories helps us predict the outcomes of our interactions with others while we know that not all outcomes can be determined with 100% reliability uh, prediction and control allows us to more easily navigate our encounters uh, think about the number of encounters you have each day in which you quickly predict and control your interaction with others 
while not 100% conclusive, it's comforting that a great number of our interactions have a certain level of probable outcomes. A criticism of empirical laws theory is that while it is useful for understanding relatively simple interactions, it can oversimplify or fail to explain situations where a number of variables exist. Uh, your classroom environment um, serves as a good example. While there are certain predictions you can make about how communication will occur in your classes, why is it that each classroom experience is unique? In your classrooms, it is impossible to predict, control, and journalize how a class will go on with 100% accuracy because it is impossible to replicate classes in exactly the same ways. This approach does not account for the variety of human choices and behaviors uh, that are brought into every communication context. It operates under the assumption that given the same context, people bring the same things to the context each time. Obviously, this is not the case. Human behaviors are complex and cannot be predicted at a 100% accuracy rate. However, empirical loss theories work well for showing us patterns of behavior that guide our communication. So this is all for today. Thank you 